In this video, I'm gonna show you how to play the Pentakill Cardis board in TFT set 10. So before I go straight into the comp, before you even, uh, you know, try to play the comp, there's a few things to know. So the first thing is that the comp is a fast level 8 comp. And it's basically because your carries and the main units you're playing, they're gonna be 4 cost. And you pretty much uh, only find that at level 8 and higher right. And the second thing, why you don't play pentakill that much before level 8, it's because, uh, as you can see on the trait right here, on the 5th kill all pentakill champions rock out and your team gains 50% attack speed. So, if you're playing a pentakill in the early game, you're really getting a lot less value from the trait because... Let's say the enemy has 4 units, you're never gonna proc this passive. Meanwhile, they have traits which actually help them. But in the late game, when everyone's level 8, level 9, you're gonna be able to proc this passive and actually get value from the trait, right? So here I saw that they said that the core comp was basically a super fan. And then you flex the rest of the pentakill units. Which, yeah, you totally can play super fan in this comp. I don't think it's bad. The problem is that if you're gonna play 7 pentakill, it's really hard to fit in a super fan as well. Because uh, now I have a headliner super, or yeah, headliner pentakill, and now we get. 7 pentakill, but you need to be level 9 to do this. And you're rolling at level 8, so it's pretty hard to fit it in. So what I generally do is I play these super fan units, Lilia and Nico, and the Nar, because it's pentakill, for the like mid game before I've hit uh, basically my comp. And then I transition into 7 pentakill, because that's just such a big spike. You can take a look here at the traits. If we have 5 pentakill, you almost have a 5 average placement, which is very bad, right? But if you get 7 penta, you actually have a 3.8 average placement. So you basically get, yeah, 1 or 2, you know, placements lower. If you hit the 7 pentakill board, it's just such a big spike. So what I tend to do once, uh, you know, I get to level 8, level 9 i will drop out the lilia nico units so we will remove the seven pentakill and then depending on what i hit i'm just gonna throw in we can take a look at the like biggest cap so the biggest cap is like throwing in a Ilawi, just because she's broken right and you can also throw in you know arcane so you get edgelord so this is really good, right? But uh, if you want to, you can also just put in another Yorick. Because uh, Yorick with 7 Penta is just really broken. So if you got the chance to do that, just uh, go for it, honestly. Uh, but if you're not hitting the 5 cost right, there's a lot of uh, really good 4 cost units you can put in. So since we have a Mord, we actually have, have one fill spot for Sentinel. So... Just feel free to put in a random Blitzcrank. And since we're playing Yorick, a unit that always is really good with him is just Fresh. So <clears throat> let's put in Fresh and Blitz here. Then we get Guardian and Sentinel. So we just have this really beefy front line. So I would usually position something like this. Probably like this I would guess. So Viego can just uh, be safe when people are targeting Blitz and uh, Akali can just uh, run up on uh, the enemies. Also, don't let my Fresh get attacked first so he gets some CC off. And uh, usually put Yorick somewhere in the middle so he's not targeted first. Oops, always accidentally took him away there. And uh, yeah, let's talk a bit about items as well. So, basically, I usually use 2-star. If I 2-star Viego or Akali, I will just itemize them. Or even both if I can. But I 
always um, itemize Viego over Akali first. With the exception on if I hit a pentakill spat, then I just uh, itemize Akali first. Because, uh, yeah, if you get this pentakill spat, uh, you pretty much always put it on Akali. And uh, she's just gonna be super broken. So then I would uh, put my items on her instead. But uh, other than that, what the items are really flex in this comp, right? The thing you need to... Uh, I think the only item you really need in the comp is uh, gonna be a Shoujin on Cardus. And it's because if you don't have this item on Cardus, he is never cast. Think you can't really build a blue buff on him because he has so high mana, so it doesn't make sense. But I suppose you can build this item on him. It will uh, give him some mana at least. Better than nothing, right? And the other items, you're just going some random AP. I think Dual Gauntlet is best. Otherwise, you can just go for like... Uh, our change is really good. It's not that picky. You really just need that Shoujin. And on Viego... <coughs> use me. Uh, Viego, Akali and Yorick. You pretty much have the same itemization. It's really... You want some healing frontline item like Bloodthirster or Hodge. Uh, you can't be that picky, you go with what you hit. And other than that, you just go full of Bruiser items. So it's gonna be Edge of Night perhaps. Maybe you get a Starax. You can go... Uh, what's it called? Titans Resolve. So any of these uh, tank Bruiser items is gonna be really good. And this is... The same items you want to go for Yorick, but you will have slammed your items on Viego and Akali first. So, uh, you if you don't get like uh, Bloodthirster and those kinds of items on Yorick, I often just slam random tank items on him. It's not as good, but it's still really good. So he stays alive and casts more. Even mana items like uh, this, I think it's really nice, because with Adaptive Hell, if he can just cast a lot and maybe get that ghoul out. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the itemization and the units of the comp. So let's talk a bit about the headliner as well. So usually the best one is just uh, if you don't have a spat, you pretty much want uh, a pentakill headliner because... Otherwise, you have to play Olaf to hit 7 pentakill, which is just not good. Uh, but if you, you know, have a pentakill spat, then you can uh, go for other headliner like maybe um, Edgelord for Viego or... Yeah, I really don't like having Executioner on Cardus though, because uh, I want to play Akali in this comp. And if I play, you know, Executioner on Cardus, I get free Executioner with Akali. So then I have to put in like a weird uh, unit like uh, Samira or Vex, which doesn't really fit in the comp that well. I, yeah, it's a bit easier to play Executioner if you hit it on like Samira board, because then you can throw in a random Akali. And then you, yeah, that's, your plus unit will be Akali, but now I already have Akali, so my plus unit will be some random, you know, trait bot. So it's not that good. I mean, what you could do is just, you skip Akali in the board, and then you try to play something else, but, I mean, yeah, Akali is just really good unit to have, so it's better to just have a pentakill headliner. Or, you know, you can even go Edgelord these two. Because you're playing Kale and then you get free Edgelord for free. And then, you know, you can put in either a Pentakill Spat or Olaf. To get the 7 Pentakill going. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the comp. I will uh, show you a game where I got the, you know, What the Forge. It was, yeah, it was really broken, right? So what really happened is uh, 
I was contested on a young game and then I just got Waterforge, got a lot of mana saints and yeah, some healing items. So it worked really well in this comp. You can even see it has a pretty good win rate on uh, the pentakill board. So I will uh, get straight on into it, guys. So I think uh, this game represents the comp really well. So what happened in the game is I was playing, uh, where was I gonna play Yone reroll? But then I realized I was basically contested by, I think it was two or three other players trying to go Yone. And it's like, yeah, I'm never getting a free star there, right? So what I decided to do is uh, just pivot into the pentakill board. It makes kind of sense because uh, you have these uh, normal uh, bruiser AD items and then you pivot into the pentakill board when you can put them on Akali or Viego. So here we have some pretty good items. I like blood money. Uh, bulk is okay. So I don't. I pretty much never take team building. So I just decide to take bulk here. Why not? A decent uh, trait. It's whatever. Maybe it was blood money because I was so weak. So I could just open fort and take that augment. I guess. But uh, uh, whatever. So we're playing uh, a really weak uh, start right here. We don't really got anything going for us. Except uh, we have a blood thirster. And uh, some bruiser components for the Yone comp. So I'm just trying to kill uh, one or two units really. And uh, we're gonna sell... 10. So we're gonna pivot into the Edge Lord Crowd Diver comp. As you see, I was planning it out there. But uh, little did I know that I was uh, super contested. So don't forget to scout. Otherwise, uh, you will never hit your units right. So here I see this guy is actually picking up a Yone. But I'm coping that he's playing like Hearthstone now, so... That's what I'm doing right here. So on this uh, carousel... Yeah, I'm just taking Yon. Might as well. So then we can put him in over this... Uh, Revent to get 4 Crowd Diver. And we can start slamming an item on him. So this is pretty good. We will be able to kill something right. Might even be able to win. Yeah. There we go. And uh, holy. Imagine if I was playing Yax here. Just get a free. Free plus Yax. Not too shabby right. So since this Riven does nothing. I'm just gonna throw in another. Uh, Evelyn. Just to get some uh, more. Crowd Diver CC and all of that. Managed to kill one unit at least. That guy had like um, a quirky opener. So this also shows you like frontline starts are pretty bad in this set I feel like. Because yeah you might have a carry that would be pretty good. But then you're just gonna face like a quirky that one shot your frontline carry. Meanwhile he's safe in the back you know. So you're pretty much never going to win streak once you're playing a frontline opener with a frontline carry right in uh, TFT in this set I feel like or at least it's really hard. So we're facing this Yone. Seems like he's stronger than me actually. He's, yeah, I guess he's a two star or whatever. So we're already really contested right here. So my strat was basically to pivot into this comp and hard to pivot into it once we're, you know, discontested. But uh, since I don't have any anti heal, I can go for a blistering strike. But I decided to just go for vampirism because that uh, augment is broken. So me, me and this dude is holding hands. But uh, we're actually... Yeah, we're gonna have to uh, find another comp to play. And uh, the hard thing about this is... I have really awkward comp or item slammed right now. 
it's like no comp I can pivot into that place, you know, Bloodthirster and uh, Titans. The most comps you would pivot into is like Ezreal and uh, Caitlyn with uh, AD items, right? But I have this kind of Bruce right then. So the only comp I'm thinking of uh, is really Pentakill, right? That would make sense. And uh, yeah, that's why I don't really like to slam these kinds of Bruce items anymore. Because it's really unflexible in this set. But uh, onto this carousel, that's a very nice uh, Viego right there. But unfortunately, this guy took it. So a little rip moment right there. So I decided to just go for Sterex. So since, you know, we can never freestar this Viego. I'm actually just gonna push levels. But uh, I'm getting really low here as you can see. So it's gonna be hard to, you know, go level 8. But uh, yeah, I think if you're having some trouble with uh, pivoting into other comps. Uh, so this is gonna show you how to do it pretty much because me and another young player we were both contesting and we both decided to change out of the comp and we both got top four this game so yeah respect to this dude that was contesting me we both managed to top four it and the other guy that was just uh, continuing to hard force you own he actually got like both four which kind of makes sense because there was like no units in the pool and you just continue to play it. So that was kind of cool to see that me and this uh, guy here just decided to uh, top 4 even though none of us were playing this board. So since I'm not that strong, I decided to just throw in this random... Uh, what's it called? The Heartsteel uh, headliner and... Uh, you know, I'm kind of too low to start playing hard still. The thing is, I feel like uh, Seth is just such a broken unit, so I didn't play him to, you know, get hard still. I just take that as a bonus. I just more played him because it's a broken tank that I got here. So, Freaky Friday is good, but I already have so many AD items, so it doesn't make sense. Yeah, we don't have another glove to go for the Thieves gloves and... Uh, UA Lotus is nice, we could uh, do that. But I actually decided to just go with the Forge, just to get some direction on what I'm playing. So, since I didn't exactly know what to do, I know I couldn't play Yon, I decided to just go this, maybe it can save my game. So it was kind of a Hail Mary play, right? As you see here, I got the... So this is when I realized, yeah, I'm just playing uh, Pentakill, right? Because I got the one AP item, I got one mana item, and uh, I got one healing item. So the mana sane and the death pyrographs is gonna go on Cardus, which is really nice. And then I'm gonna have uh, my uh, Sonias on some frontline unit, probably Tarik or <laughs> uh, Yorick, I mean. And we have this healing item that we're just gonna place on Yum, right? So it's kind of perfect. The thing I just need to do right now is I need to uh, go to level 8, sell my headliner and the spray I hit the board. So we're putting in what we're gonna roll for in the team planner. And uh, I decided to agree the... Probably agree the heart steal cash out. Let's see if I'm able to do it. But until uh, we hit our board we're just gonna place uh, our items on uh, Yon for now. Mana Sane actually works kind of nice on him, because he just casts infinite and heals so much. I don't know if we can greed this heart still though, we might just die if we do it. So I really want this Yorick, that would be really nice. That's so huge getting a Yorick right there, because that unit would be so hard to find otherwise. So, gonna level up 8, put him in. And uh, I'm just gonna slam whatever item I get, because I realize I'm just gonna get a artifact item anyways. So, I guess that's our last item on uh, Cardus. So we're gonna have Mana Sane, Deathfire, and 
you know, the sniper item, whatever it's called, I forget. And that item works really well on him, because he can ult the backline units, and he's always in the corner, so... Makes sense to put that on the Cardus, right? So this Cardus is gonna be a Giga Beast with three items. So now we got the cash out, we're gonna sell the set right here, and start rolling for a headliner. So I actually decided to just pick up this uh, poppy for now. Just uh, so we can uh, survive a bit, you know? Without having to roll, because I thought it was, this should be enough to win actually, because this poppy unit is kind of cracked as well, right? With Anima Visage as well. Is kind of gonna pop off. And uh, now you can see this uh, card is in action. We just need to get that uh, Mana Sane on him. So I think, uh, yeah, we're obviously never gonna play this pop in the late game. I was uh, just uh, a bit too slow to uh, do my transition. So I decided to just went for it for one round. Because it was the round before the minions. So I can greed my econ up and just roll after the minion round. Now I saved up 50 econ for another round. So that's really good. And uh, now we're just gonna start rolling for it. So we found a uh, Pilawi. Always gonna pick that up. It's just broken, right? Gonna pick the setup until we find something better. We're gonna probably... Oh, there we go. There we get the headliner pentakill. Yeah. Gonna... Take that, and then now we have a Giga Beast Carcass right here. Three artifacts on him, and the headliner with seven pentakill. So good stuff. About to be a and uh, yeah, we're gonna change the Anima Visage and the Sonyas to our. Uh, what's he called? Yorick, just to make him. Uh, yeah, be unkillable. Just so he casts enough to get that ghoul out. So, funnily enough, I think these are like the best artifact combo you can get on Yorick. It's so broken. We have Anima Visage for the healing and tankiness. Then we have Sonyas, so he can heal up if he gets too low. And he gets even more tankiness. And then lastly, we have Mana Sane. Just so he keeps pumping up his ghouls until he spawns the big ghoul or whatever you call it. So... Yeah, this York is a beast right here. See, he already spawned that uh, thingy right there. So that's just gonna give me infinite front line to tank for this Cardus. So you can just one-shot everything. And we're gonna have to put in uh, Akali. And you kinda need to play Executioner if you're gonna itemize uh, Cardus. Because it's gonna make it so his ability crits. And that's just a really big dip so that's why i pretty much always play akali in this comp as well so here we could go mosher emblem but nah i'd rather just take more items because every item is an artifact i think that's more important than having a random mosher emblem so instead of having this mosher emblem now i just get double the viegos and that's really yeah, it's really good I put it on Viego here. I guess you could put it on Ilawi. The thing is... Yeah, I have 7 pentakill, so it's just gonna be more valuable to put it on a pentakill rather than Ilawi. Even though it's a 5 cost. I would have put it on um, my uh, Yorick, but you know, he already has 3 items. So, gonna put it on Viego. It's a 2 star and a 4 cost, so it's still good. So here, we're just gonna level to 9, because I'm pretty much one loss away from uh, dying. And this way, I can uh, keep playing my Zed, as well as putting in this Akali. So that's kind of nice. So I'm just putting in this Akali for uh, execution trait. So you, you're gonna see the hardest time is gonna go up a lot right here. Just because his ability crits now, it literally did... 1.4k damage. Yeah, look at this damage art right there. Holy. And uh, I mean, I'm just gonna skip that drag around so you guys don't have to see it right there. Yeah. And uh, what I'm looking at right here is basically two-story Lowy. 
and another unit to put in instead of uh, Zed. So I think Zona is really trash actually if you don't have a man item or what's it called a uh, Ginsu on her. But I feel like if you just get a two star Zona, you have to play it. And Mana Sane is not gonna help her. Or it's actually gonna help her get the first cast off because it gives like 20 mana, I believe. But if she gets one cast off, I basically just win the game because she's gonna cast another time. So her damage ulti attacks the entire map, as well as Card is just attacking three units. And together that with us having this Giga tank yeah, tankiness on Yorick, I'm actually just super strong that it's or my frontline is super strong, so I actually think uh, Zona is able to cast. So yeah, respect to uh, this Yone guy. Actually, pivot out of uh, Yone just like me. He went into a counter board and he managed to get, I believe, a second place. Uh, yeah, respect to this dude right here. Yeah, it's kind of funny, like me and this guy were both you know, contesting the same Yone comp. We both switch comp, and the guy keeps playing Yone, he gets bot 4, and we who just change comp last second. Even though we have awkward items, all of that, we managed to get a top 4. So, yeah, no matter what placement we get here, we should both be happy that we get a top 4. And, uh, a, yeah. So you see him right here, I mean, the thing is he's playing like a counter board, so he's not gonna beat me. Yeah, I feel like it's kind of hard to get a first with country, it doesn't cap uh, as high as other boards. But somehow this guy is uh, kind of beating me, huh? Never mind, I take everything back. Maybe it's not, maybe it's him that goes first here. Yeah, well, you just have to see, I guess. So, I just want any item to get another, you know, artifact. So, let's see. So, we're just gonna take the most expensive unit to get the artifact on. And this Hullbreaker is pretty nice, right? Some, um... So, here, since I lost the last round, I'm actually just gonna sell this Cardus because we didn't win last round anyways. So, you know, I might as well just throw a Hail Mary to put in a Headliner... Yorick, because this guy seemed to be popping up as well, you know, so I figured if anything can save this game I mean, I'm just Let's try it. Why not? Let's see if uh, he can pop up right here. And I mean it seemed like he did. Look at this Yeah, and the other guy was facing my ghost and he actually died. So thank you guys so much for watching If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for more TFT set hand content I really appreciate it and it helps out the channel. Yeah, peace out everybody.